But anyways, guys, this is the last roll. So let's see if it's gonna bring us any luck. What in the world? Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? That thing is slick, guys. That is definitely gonna be older. Let's go ahead and flip this one over and see what the year is gonna be. Three, two, one. Hello everybody and welcome back to CoinQuest. CoinQuest of course is the series where I take $25 boxes of pennies like this one right here, go through the rolls looking for interesting and valuable coins that I can use to fill in these collection books. In just a minute here we're going to be ripping into these penny rolls looking for old coins and valuable coins and to figure out what's what we're going to be using my coin roll hunting placemat here. These coin roll hunting placemats are essential for coin roll hunting pennies. They make it super easy to figure out what's what, what's valuable, what you should pull out and what you should throw back. Not to mention they're super good for transporting the coins and dumping them into your dump box. That being said, if you're interested in picking one of these up for yourself to aid you in your own coin roll hunting, you can head on over to my website at quinzcoins.com and I will be posting links down in the description below. All right, so enough about that. Now it's time to get into this box of pennies and see what we're gonna find. So as many of you know, I just recently moved to a new area and for me, what that means is finding a new bank to get coins. This box right here came from a bank that I've never ordered from before and uh, I was actually pretty pleasantly surprised when I opened up this box uh, to see what was inside here. So if we take a look, uh, it turns out that we actually have an ender, which is kind of difficult to come by uh, on the pennies here. But you can see right here we have a wheat scent on the end right there. And it's the only ender in the box. I've checked the other sides uh, just to make sure. And I've also checked all the dates on everything. I didn't see anything other than uh, some more 60s on the ends. This is a wheat scent ender though, which means it's from 1909 up through 1959. So guys, to start this hunt off, I figured we'd go with the wheat penny ender. In addition to that, I'll just go ahead and grab this random 1960s, which I saw on the end, which is about as close as you're gonna get uh, to a wheat penny without actually being one. So why don't we go ahead and jump into this first roll live and uh, see what the date on that wheat penny is gonna be. I'm open to your guesses, leave them down in the comments below and uh, let me know if you guessed it right. My guess personally, I'm gonna go with 1953. Let's see what it's gonna be, guys. So here is the reverse. That's what we saw on the end of the roll. Looks like it's got some damage up there on the top right, uh, but other than that, it is looking like it's in pretty good shape. So let's go ahead and flip this over here and see what we're gonna get in three, two, one. Oh, guys, I was close. 1956 is the date on that coin. So that's a pretty common wheat penny right there. Uh, I'm sure we already have it in the collection, but uh, I will definitely be putting that up to the side. Um, we always pull out wheat pennies, of course, that's what we're looking for here. And uh, real quickly here, let's just go through the rest of this and see if we're gonna get any more wheats in here. Already guys, I'm seeing a lot of good copper coins right here. There's a 1980, 1961 Denver, very close uh, to being a wheat penny right there. And then if we keep going here, uh, looks like we got pretty normal spread over on this uh, second half of the roll. I see a 1962 right there. That's very close. 74 is also copper. Uh, in case you guys are wondering, I don't pull out the coppers anymore. I used to, but it ended up being uh, quite a bit. And uh, I still have a lot of that stored away. Don't really know what to do with it. So um, that is going to be it for that roll, guys. I have another one right here. Uh, the 1960 Ender. Let's see what the year is going to be on that one. As you can see, this one also has a bit of damage there uh, on Lincoln's head, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and pull that one out. It looks like we got a good amount of copper on that right side. And uh, guys, still haven't seen any Canadians. Even in that first roll, didn't get a single one, which is actually pretty uncommon for uh, up here. All right, so this one's going to be a 1964. Like I said, a little bit of damage up there on uh, Lincoln's head. Uh, so we're just going to throw that one back. It's not really going to be worth anything for, uh, to us. So we got a 68 right there, that's pretty old. Guys, I'm actually thinking that we might not get any Canadians in this box, that'd be kind of sad though. Um, all right, so let's see if we're gonna get another wheat penny here. Would really like to see one more come out. Oh, right there guys, very, very close. It's just a 1959 Denver. There is actually a chance there. I've, I've heard of this thing called a mule scent, which is uh, basically the combination of uh, a Lincoln Memorial and a wheat penny. And it wasn't supposed to happen, but uh, there's rumors that it did happen at least once. So let's see if we're gonna get one here. <laughs> I'm not even gonna count it down, guys. That's ridiculous. There's no way that we're gonna get a wheat scent uh, ender on the back of that uh, regular 1959 coin. All right, so going through the rest of these guys, I'm not seeing anything else. So we're just going to go ahead and get into the next one and I'll turn the camera back on when I find something good. So we've been through four rolls now, still nothing to show for it other than that first wheat penny that we found on the end. And we finally just got into another good roll here, guys. I love the patina on this coin right here. This is the reason I turned the camera on and I have a feeling uh, that we may have more in the roll. But look at this coin, guys. 1945 Denver with a 
really nice dark patina, a little bit of a lighter uh, toning on those more surface areas. Let's flip it over to the backside and take a look at that wheat. Wow, that is a really nice looking coin, guys. I just like the look of it. It's not in, in, uh, in great shape by any means. No luster left on it or anything. But uh, the look of it, guys, it's just, I, I really love that. Uh, 45 Denver, unfortunately, isn't super rare. It's quite common. Um, but uh, let's see if we're going to get anything else in this roll. Hoping for some more wheat pennies here. I'm seeing a lot of uh, those older 60s, like that one right there is in 1962. You can kind of see that high relief uh, uh, on that coin. And actually, guys, look at that. This one right here is also going to be a wheat penny for us. 1958 Denver just barely made it uh, into the wheat range right there. Looks like we got a little scratch on the left side, but uh, other than that, this is uh, this coin is also in pretty good shape. So I will definitely take that one. Uh, looking at the book over here, guys, we actually have quite a few that we're still missing, uh, even in that 50s range. So I'll definitely be on the lookout. Now that I can't tell if it's a 39 or a 59. Looks like it's going to be just a 59 based on that uh, reverse right there. So. That's pretty cool though, another 1959, uh, getting really close to the wheat territory there. Uh, looks like some of these rolls might just be a lot better than others. But guys, we just got a 45 Denver and a 55 Denver out of the same roll. That's definitely a good roll in my book. And uh, speaking of my book, let's take a look at it now. <laughs> um, so here we go, guys. This is what we still need in the 50s. Uh, I put this white paper in the back so that you guys could kind of see a little bit better of what I uh, still need in the collection and what I don't. Um, these three are actually just open spots. They don't uh, take any coins, but all these other ones we still need. Some of these are common, like the 57 is pretty common. I believe the 51, 54. Um, those estimate coins are, are a lot more difficult for me to find, but I'm definitely looking out for these ones. I really should be uh, coming across them anytime soon here. And then uh, when we get into the 40s and the 30s, it gets a little bit more difficult to find, especially getting back uh, into the 20s. You can see that we have quite a few missing there. And then in the teens, we have pretty much the whole page except for five coins. So we'll get it back into the hunt, guys. Hopefully we can find some of those today and I'll turn the camera back on when I find something good. All right, guys, so I'm definitely happy with this box so far. The very next roll had another wheat penny showing uh, in pretty rough shape, got some corrosion there, but it is a 1956 Denver, uh, which I believe we got the 56 plane a little bit earlier. And now we have the Denver. Now we didn't need any of those in the collection, but definitely cool to see. Let's keep going here, guys. Look at that. We just got another one. And I actually had my uh, suspicions about this one. Saw the edge of it. I thought this might end up being a, even a little bit older of a wheat penny here. Check, check a look at this, guys. Uh, it's definitely got some uh, more wear on those wheat ears. Definitely looking older than those other ones. It might just be more worn. Let's go ahead and find out here. I'm hoping for a 30s here. Three, two one all right 1944 we'll take it i believe that is actually the most common uh, wheat penny out of all of them so two more common wheat pennies out of that roll and we got a whole bunch more to go guys we are at five wheat pennies out of six rolls that is a great ratio hopefully it keeps up and i'll let you know if i find anything else all right guys so i decided to keep the camera rolling and we actually have a couple of interesting newer finds here uh this is pretty cool actually so to start us off actually we have two of them right here uh, this right here is a 2019 Philadelphia penny. Uh, we actually don't have this one in the collection yet, surprisingly. We do have the Denver, but we've been looking for the Philadelphia. So I guess that's what you get uh, when you switch over to a new bank. You end up getting exposed to some coins uh, that you probably haven't been tapping into before. So I'll definitely take that one for the collection. And then right next to that, we actually have, oh, there's another 2019 right there. Uh, we have a 2009. It looks like it has a little bit of damage on it from the coin rolling machine. But uh, it's still a 2009, so if you look at the placemat here, I'll clear some of these pennies out. Uh, we have all four different designs of 2009, and uh, I'm going to say this is probably going to be formative years. I'll just take a guess. Let's see what we got, guys. Three, two, one. Oh, look at that. Got it right. First try. Uh, that's actually one of my favorites. Me and Chad from CFA have a little bit of a joke about that one. Uh, another great channel you guys should check out. But uh, we count those as one point on our score sheet if we're doing uh, competition hunts. And I see that this roll is completely flooded uh, with 2019s now. So they're definitely not difficult to find. It's just the first one that I came across. But uh, that's great, guys. We got a 2009 and a 2019 out of that roll. So that's pretty cool. I'll put that one in the collection, and then we'll get on to the next roll. All right, a couple rolls later, and it looks like we're going to get another one here. It's about the fourth coin in, and it's a wheat reverse. My favorite. We get to look at this, flip it over, guess the date, all of the above. All right, that looks pretty cool. It's got a little bit of a greenish tone to it. Let's flip this over and see what we're going to get, guys. Three, two, one. 
All right, another 56 Denver. I don't know about you guys, but that nine kind of looks filled. Might be a filled nine. I'm not 100% on that, and hopefully the camera's picking it up for you guys. That might be a filled nine right there. I know a thing or two about errors, and that that's uh, looking like it to me. All right, let's get out of the rest of this roll here. Let's see if we're going to get a two-wheat roll. Uh, I think the last two ones that I did on camera ended up being two-wheat rolls, so let's see if we can keep the streak going here. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of zinc in this one, though, guys, so unfortunately... I don't think this is going to make it. Still looking for 2009s, of course. Uh, always got to keep an eye out for them. I have a pretty difficult time finding them. So that's going to be it for that one, guys. We'll go ahead and get on to the next roll. All right, so the last few rolls have been kind of dry, but uh, right at the end of this one here, we got a pretty nice sight. Right there is a 2009 presidency. That's the reverse. Now, if we flip this over and we have a Denver, that's the one that we find the most difficulty uh, getting up here in Michigan. I'm not sure if the Denver or the Philadelphia is actually rarer, but this is the rarest of the series of four that we talked about earlier. Uh, it's over here on the right side. It's the last one in the series, and it is the rarest. So I'm hoping for the Denver mint mark here. Let's see if we get it, guys. Three, two, one. Nope, it's just going to be a Philly. And there it goes. All right, so right here I have a fresh roll opened on a fresh placemat. No other coins. And the third coin in the roll happens to be a Wheat Penny Reverse. Let's take a look at this coin up close. So once again, most of these coins are in good shape, guys. They have all of the Wheat Ears intact. Everything looks good. Uh, and as a result, they've all been from the 50s. So I'm hoping for something a little older here. Uh, maybe we just get lucky and it survived in that condition. Let's find out, guys. Three, two, one. 1957, guys. Look at that. That's actually one that we need in the collection. We were just talking about this. And uh, look at that, guys. We actually just got it here. Even though it's not what I was hoping for, it's definitely something that I will take and put into the collection. I don't know how it's taken this long to get that coin, but we finally got it right there, guys. And uh, honestly, couldn't be happier because it's getting really hard to find coins at this point. All right, so let's see if we're going to get any other treats out of this roll, guys. I don't think uh, we're going to be able to beat one going into the collection unless it's even older. And uh, I guess at this point, it's even harder to get them in now that we have another one. So if we get another 57, it wouldn't go in. But I think that's actually going to be it, guys, for that roll. So we'll go ahead and get on to the next one. Take a look at that beautiful new coin in the collection. Always happy to see it. All right, let's get on to the next one. So it looks like the very next roll has another one for us here. In all of these new coins, we actually got another wheat reverse. And uh, once again, really nice shape. So we'll go ahead and flip this over here and see what we got. Three, two, one. I was really enjoying looking at that, by the way, guys. 1942 is the year on that. Now that, I'm going to guess that we already have, but I want to check the collection just to make sure. 1942. Wow, okay, so we are needing the Denver and the San Francisco on that coin, but not the Philadelphia, so we will put that one to the side. All right, so we got kind of an odd one here. It's a little bit older, and it happens to have a mint mark. Now this was the first thing I saw, and it was the date region of the coin. You can take a look there. This one is actually going to be... 1941 Denver. Now, like I said, guys, we do need the 42 and 42 Denver and the 42 S. Uh, but looking at the collection now, it looks like we actually have all of the 1941s, uh, so we won't need this one in the collection. Let's take a look at the reverse here, and uh, no surprise, guys, this one is also in really good shape, just like all of the other ones that have been coming out so far. Uh, so that's something I'm, that I'm definitely happy about. I'm really hoping to get into that pre-40s era where we can get some a uh, little bit more rare coins or maybe a 55S, something like that would be cool to see. Uh, I saw this one, I just wanted to show you guys in an earlier roll, and uh, what a weird toning on that coin. But also, if you look at the left side, uh, it looks like this was actually um, not really stamped correctly. I don't know what the proper term for it would be, but you can see that you have kind of like a double rim there. Uh, let me know, guys, down below in the comments if that's going to be something of value. Now, guys, I can't say for sure whether this is true or artificial toning. My instinct says that somebody did this artificially, but uh, now that I have this under the camera, 
I actually really like that double rim. So this is definitely one to keep regardless of the toning. Uh, let me know, like I said, down in the comments below if you think that this is going to be valuable or not. Uh, like I said, this isn't something I typically look for, but when I see something that's as obvious as that, I definitely am gonna be pulling it out. All right, this is pretty sweet here. So we're a couple rolls later, and I have to say my initial suspicion about there being a low number of Canadians in this box has so far been true. We're about halfway through and haven't found a single Canadian until now. We take a look right here. I saw the reticles on this coin, knew it was gonna be Canadian, just didn't know it would be this old. So this is what we refer to as a young head Canadian. These were minted from 1953 up through 1964. So these are pretty old. They're in that wheat penny range kind of around that area. Let's go ahead and flip this one over. And uh, what we're hoping for is a one of the early 50s, mid 50s. Uh, those are the good ones to find. So let's see what we get here. Three, two, one they flip a little different all right 1964 that's the one that you most commonly find uh still happy to pull that out though i haven't seen canadian in a while so i was happy to get that one all right so getting through the rest of these coins here doesn't look like there's going to be much uh some chances here but nothing is going to come of it so we'll get on to the next one all right so i'm not really sure how this just happened but i literally just went through like 15 rolls without finding hardly anything. The only thing that I found, and this was in the very next roll after I cut the camera off, was a 1977 Canadian. Look at this though. We got a reverse wheat penny right here. Finally, after 15 rolls. Let's go ahead and flip this one over and see what we got, guys. Three, two, one. All right, so we are getting a little bit older finally. 1940 is the date on that one. And uh, checking the collection, it looks like we aren't gonna need the 1940 in the collection. Like I said, guys, we're looking for pre 1940s So older than that would be uh, very nice to see. Now it looks like we have two, four, six, eight, nine wheat pennies so far on the box. Definitely not as good of a ratio uh, as when we started. But it seems like these uh, the rolls towards the front are doing me a lot better than the ones in the back. So I don't know if it's a, a uneven dispersal of these wheat pennies and like you guys have seen we've gotten a couple rolls that had two two in it and, uh, and then we get some that have none in it and we get those for a long time uh, i don't think there's going to be another one in here but just to test this out guys this one is a little bit more towards me let's see uh, if this one from the front of the box is going to do us any good so let's go ahead and jump into this roll right here on um, first inspection, I'm seeing, eh, it's, it looks pretty average as far as uh, copper content goes. That one looks kind of old. Nope, just a 1977. All right, let's go ahead and go through this and uh, see if we're gonna get any wheat pennies here, guys. So, um, what's new with me, guys? Like I said, I just recently moved into a new place. Uh, I've been working on the Quinn's Coins website. I'm trying to completely revamp it and uh, hopefully release that soon. I have a lot of cool stuff planned. But other than that, uh, oh, I'm also working on some merch as well. So uh, you guys will let me know if uh, that's something that you'd be interested in. Probably gonna do a sweater. Uh, you guys know the kind of stuff I like to wear, just the ones that don't have a hood on the back, just a nice little sweater. I like hats as well, so I'm thinking about doing something like that. Um, but you guys let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. All right, that is it for that roll, guys. I got 10 more to go, and I'll let you know if I find anything in them. Of course, I'll be turning the camera on to show you. So about four rolls later now, we have another wheat reverse showing right here. And this one looks like it's got some corrosion on it, but still, it does look a bit more worn uh, than the ones that we've seen earlier. So I'm hoping this one's gonna be old, guys. We gotta get an older one out of here. 1940 is the record for the oldest on this box so far. Let's get a 30s here, guys. Three, two, one. Ah, oh, so close. That one looks pretty cool on the front though. 1941 Denver. I think we actually have another one of those. Yeah, 1941 Denver we found earlier. So I will add that one uh, right next to it. And we'll go through the rest of this roll. Oh, look at that, guys. We finally got another two wheat roll right here. And uh, this one looks like it's definitely going to be right next to a 2009 as well. This is definitely shaping up to be a good roll. Now that one is in pristine condition. I really love the look at that one. Let's flip this one over. I'm guessing 50s for this, guys. Three, two, one. Yep, 1956 Denver. I believe that's how we started the box. And uh, we're getting down to the end here now. We only have six more to go. Let's see what we're gonna get for a reverse on this 2009, guys. Three, two, one. 
All right, so that's one we don't have yet. I believe that is the professional life. The only one that we're missing at this point is the birth and early childhood. That one's pretty nasty though, unfortunately. Uh, we did find one of these a little bit earlier. I just didn't show it on camera because I didn't figure it was worth it at this point. But let's go ahead and see if we're gonna make this a three wheat roll, guys. We don't have too many coins here to look through. And it looks like that's gonna be it. So like I said, guys, six more rolls to go. Let's see what we're gonna get. All right, so this is kind of wild, guys. In those last two rolls, we were able to pull out three of these in a row. We got three 400 years, 2009s, and they are actually in really nice shape. Look at these things. Just beautiful coins. I love that, guys. Got a whole bunch of them now. We are also able to get one more Canadian, 1975. They've all been copper so far, pretty old as well. And uh, right over here, we're on the third to last roll. We just got another wheat penny. Now, guys, this one is going to be a 1945. And if that was an S, we would actually need that in the collection. But it is not, unfortunately. So we will put that one to the side. And uh, like I said, guys, this is third to last roll. So we only have a few more to go. So we may as well go through the rest of these live. So let's go ahead and take a look at this last one here. Hopefully something comes out. Um, that is a really chewed up 1969 right there. All right, 1980 there. Hoping for another two wheat roll. Also looking for 2009s. Guys, let me know down in the comments if I'm missing any. Uh, you guys always do anyway, whether I ask or not. So definitely won't have a problem there. All right, so there's second to last, and there's the last one right there. So let's get into the second to last roll here and see what we're going to get. All right, that did not come apart very well uh, like I was hoping that it would. Um, guys, this is super weird, though. This, this box, like I predicted didn't end up having very many Canadians in it. Um, it's definitely not something that I'm used to up here. Uh, typically the boxes that I get, and I have been at the same bank for a pretty long time, um, probably will still go back to it as well. Look at that, guys. We got another wee penny. Um, anyway, let's, let's take a look at this first. I'll get back to what I was saying. So once again, a really nice uh, dark patina on that in pretty good shape as well. So let's flip this over and see what we got, guys. Three, two, 1951. Denver. Do we need the 1951 Denver? No, we need the 1951 plane. I knew we needed something like that. So that's a, that's a good find though, especially out of these last two rolls. It's nice to have something like that come out. Uh, but like I was saying, guys, uh, I'm super surprised to get so few Canadians. I think we've only gotten three so far. Now, granted, one of them was a young head, but uh, it's pretty offsetting. I, I didn't think that... Uh, you know, a box in the same area virtually would have so few uh, Canadians where I'm usually used to getting like a whole roll of them uh, per box. But anyways, guys, this is the last roll. So let's see if it's going to bring us any luck. What in the world? Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? That thing is slick, guys. That is definitely going to be older. It's got to be pre-40s. Wow, this is the very last roll right here. Just opened it live on camera. You guys saw that, right? All right, just making sure. Okay, so let's go ahead and flip this one over and see what the year is going to be. Hopefully, it's going into the book, guys. Three, two, one. 1936. So it is pre-40s. I don't know if that's going to make it into the book, though, guys. I'm going to flip the page here and uh, see if we're going to need that 1936. Are we on the right page? It looks like we are. And I'll go ahead and show you guys. I'll give you the news right now. 1936 is already filled into the collection, unfortunately. But guys, that is a pre-40s uh, wheat penny right there. And it came out on the last roll, so I can't be mad about it. That thing is slick, though. I thought that was going to be 20s at least. All right, we'll put that one to the side, guys. Get into the last of this roll. Hopefully, uh, that luck continues with these coins. I'm seeing a lot of copper, so I'm hoping for some good stuff here. All right, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's see what we're going to get here, guys. Come on, wheat pennies. This is 64. Uh, I'm not seeing. I'm seeing a lot of memorial backs here. I don't know about this, guys. I think that's going to be it for the roll. All right, guys, so that's it for the box. We'll go ahead and get into the wrap-up and show you exactly what we were able to find. Got a couple new coins into the collection, which is super hard, as you know, uh, this late into the series. So let's go ahead and take a look at exactly what we were able to find today.
All right, guys, welcome to the wrap up. Here we have all of the coins laid out on the back of the placemat here. We have our score sheet here, which we're gonna use to tally up the points and see how many points we got on this box. So starting up here with the wheat cents in the 40s and 50s at five cents a piece, we have a whole bunch of them up here, 13 in total. And I love those dark patina ones the most. Those stand out really nicely. I, I just love the look at those. Uh, so that's 65 points in 40s and 50s wheats alone. Coming up here to the 10s, 20s, and 30s, we just got that single coin at the end of the box, uh, which really, I think, made this box uh, a lot more fun, guys. 19, 36 on that one. So that's gonna add 10 more points uh, for a total of 75 points on the wheats. Now coming down to the 2009s, we got a decent amount of them here. The majority of them, the vast majority, uh, were the formative years. Didn't get any birth in early childhood, but we did get one uh, presidency over here and then one professional life right there for eight more points. And then we got a lonely young head right there. That was in 1964. Now we can't forget, guys, that we also were able to get a 1957 wheat penny, which went into the collection right here. That's going to give us five more points right there. And, and not to mention, it got a coin into the collection, which is getting super hard to do at this point. So guys, totaling it all up, we got a total of 93 points. And like I always say, uh, 100 points is a good box, but this was definitely above average. Uh, not exceptional, but definitely above average. So guys, this was a fun box today. I definitely had fun putting a 1957 into the collection, as well as getting that 1936 and some of those other goodies that came out. Uh, it was interesting to check out a new bank. I think I'm definitely gonna go back and buy more boxes from these people. Uh, there's definitely some good older American stuff in here. A little bit bummed about not getting as many Canadians, but if it's Canadians you're after, guys, I have a whole bunch more videos. As a matter of fact, I just recently picked up some pretty big Canadian purchases online and I think you're gonna want to stick around for those especially if you're interested uh, in Canadian coins those will be coming up on the channel sometime soon now of course as always if you want to pick up one of these coin roll hunting placemats to aid you in your penny roll hunting you can head on over to my website at quincecoins.com I'll be putting links down in the description below but anyways guys that's gonna pretty much do it for this one thank you so much for watching make sure to go down below and leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new because I post new videos like this every single week always bring you along with the hunts and having a good time and as always I'm Quinn and this is Quinn's Coin signing out and I will see you in the next one.